All right, Rogi Martinez, welcome back to the show, man. Um, good to have you back, and uh, good to see that you got another fight with Ryzen. Um, how are you feeling today, man? Yeah, I'm feeling good, man. Everything's going good. Um, yeah, definitely back. Uh, excited to be back in Ryzen, too. Yeah, the last time you were uh, in the Ryzen ring, you took on Jake Hewn. You lost a split. You went back to deep, defended your title at deep. It was the 93 impact. Um, yes. How did you feel about that uh, performance after you know losing a very close fight? Uh, man, overall, I thought I was uh, I was um, I was pretty happy. Other than uh, that first, uh, what looked like a takedown mm -hmm. uh, was actually me uh, overthrowing on an elbow. So he kind of caught me off balance, and I ended up on my back. But other than that, I felt like I fought a good fight. I also implemented. Um, something I should have been using for a while, which was my elbows from the stand-up. Um, and I was kind of forced to do that just because of going through the whole injury with my hand. So it just kind of refreshed me and reminded me that, hey, man, you still got elbows, you know? So I picked that up a lot um, in the in the last, in the the training going into the last fight, and I, I just really wanted to use it a lot, which I did. And I guess I was pretty happy with that, you know? With the hand injury and having to go through surgery and recover from that, and I know you're a very active guy. You want to stay active and keep training. So that that was the main focus when you were hurt is just let me work on these elbows? Yeah, so what it was is working on my elbows and also my left hand. So um, that's something else that improved a whole lot since the last fight was my left hand, my jabs, uh, my hooks, uh, and, and on top of my elbows. So in a way it's like a, it's like a, it was like a blessing in disguise but of course i never wanted the the loss you know you never want a loss but um if anything like i i learned to uh improve on other areas while my hand was broken i had pins in there so i couldn't train with it for a while yeah how long was that uh how long were you sidelined for um as far as competing i was sidelined uh, i i believe they had uh the doctor cleared me I want to say it was six to eight weeks pro uh, after the actual initial surgery. Um, but yeah, my my healing, um, the healing process went through pretty quick. Um, I stayed uh, pretty uh, thorough with my rehab and all that. Um, I think a lot helped was that this wasn't my first sur uh, surgery for an injury. So I kind of already had that mentality built up that, you know, there's so many things you can work on while you're injured. So I, that's what I did, you know. Um, uh, I, I tell people that realistically, after that that fight, I lost to Jake. Um, I came home. I wanted to relax, you know. My body was hurt, hands broken. Um, but man, I, I took two days. I sat. I flew back on a Monday. I took Tuesday. I rested. I just stayed on my couch. And I went to the doctor for the X-ray, you know, to get the official uh, whatever was going to be um, decided on that and. Um, by Wednesday, man, I was sitting at home and I was like, man, I can't just do this. So um, I, took, I put on one glove on my left hand and I went into my garage and was back on the bag. And since then, I, I, haven't, taken a, I haven't taken a break, man. So I've been in fight camp since two days after my June 2nd fight in Ryzen. That's pretty good say, man. The, the obsession is there, which is good, man. You, you know, a lot of guys, they might get injured and just be like, oh, man, it's over. And to me, it proved a lot to myself. Like, man, I'm I am obsessed with this, man. And uh, it's to the point like I realized that my obsession with training and all that it's affecting a lot of other things. Like, really, and uh, it's kind of funny you brought that up because you know I, I've noticed like there's friends that are you know they're kind of like I think the ones that I like to hang out with you know just to relax, not training wise. I feel like I'm lose I'm distancing myself from them a little bit and it's not because you know i don't want to hang out with them it's just i have this obsession over training and i feel like that people are like kind of like man you know what's up with that but it's it's really what it takes man and you know i just i feel like i still have so much to uh to prove to not just to everybody um but to myself man like it's all i do man i train i work still my full-time job and um picked up another business venture so man i just i'm so busy you know but that obsession is is what's going to get me to where i need, where i eventually want to go and where where i'm des uh destined to be you know you know it, was, it wasn't too long ago when you were uh contemplating uh, retirement 
and yeah. just, just hanging it all up. But now it's just like you you're talking about obsession and 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 it's good to hear, man, that uh, you you have other things outside the cage, but then you also have goals inside the not the cage, the ring inside the ring yeah. that you want to accomplish, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. With the fighters that you're competing against in deep, do you sometimes feel that they're not as the caliber you should be fighting against, even though they're very experienced? Yeah, no, definitely, I feel that, man. Like uh, when they come to me with like you know the the caliber of fighters that I've been fighting, it's like I definitely feel like I I should be um, fighting better guys. But at the same time, I also don't want to just sit around and wait, you know, like. I want to be active, man. Like that's the thing is, if I'm not injured, I want to fight as often as possible. Um, but I, after that last one, well, actually, if you look at it, after Crow Cop, I lost. I went back to deep, defending my title. You know, I think after coming off a loss, it's kind of hard to be picky about who you're gonna fight, you know, and whatnot. Uh, that on top of just me wanting to be active, you know, I, you know, I, like you said, yeah, I feel like I deserve to fight better guys, but. At the same time, too, man, I just got to take what's given to me and just keep going, keep the train rolling, you know? You know, all the big fights are in Ryzen, and you're once again back with the promotion. Did it take you longer than you expected to get a slot on a card? Um, yeah, well, maybe so. Like, I was thinking that um, when they had the Bellator Ryzen thing, I was like, I was thinking, man, maybe they'll call me for that one, you know? Um, I was already cleared from my injury to compete. Um, but also at the same time, that's when Deep was calling too. So I felt like, oh man, if I hold off, I wait to fight in Bellator Ryzen, and let's say they don't call, and then I'm stuck without a fight again. But already Deep had offered me the fight, so I was like, ah, oh, you know, let's just take this, uh, get back on the winning track. And um, I think that fight security was what was most important to me at the time. And um, yeah, I took that one, and I knew if I put on a good show that. You know, uh, I don't see why Ryzen wouldn't want me back in there. Well, they do want you back, man. They got you. In the late January, you actually went out to Japan for the press conference, um, and you got to meet your opponent. Have you seen him around? You know, because you've been fighting in Japan the last couple of years. Have you seen him around the regional scene? Um, not really, uh, but I do have a lot of friends out here who compete in the Asian Open um, jiu-jitsu tournaments pretty often. So when the fight announcement came, like uh, a lot of those guys recognized him because apparently he was he's like the heavyweight jiu-jitsu ace out in uh, Japan. So that's how I was familiar with them was mostly through grappling. So you met him for the first time. You know, when you sized him up, was he bigger than you expected? Uh, not actually, not really. He was. I, I think I might have been like an inch or so taller, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, he's a big guy, like thick. You know, and I shook his hand, like he has a pretty big and uh, he's just a you know you can tell he's a physically strong big guy but uh but yeah i mean uh i wasn't nothing that threw me off you know i fought so many guys already now it's yeah. just another guy really he has some crazy looking eyes you know when you went face to face with him did you see anything weird uh yeah he tried to like do that i guess you would say pro wrestling style of stare down <laughs> But man, that's the thing about me is like, you can try to stare me down and do the whole intimidation thing, but that dude, that doesn't work when we're face to face, you know. And I think he kind of freaked out when he saw me, uh, kind of give him that look. You know, I can see it in a lot of guys I fight, and um, I, and I can tell they know when they look into my eyes that I'm I'm, I'm just not scared of you when we're face to face, you know. Uh, I think it threw him off a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> He is a big guy, a big, thick guy, but he hasn't fought MMA since 2018. So do you even go back and look at any of his fights? Um, I do a little bit. Um, I've never really been uh, one that's big on studying film of my opponents. I like to, I like to go into a fight <clears throat> doing what I want to do instead of waiting to see what they're going to do. But I, I did just see some of his stuff just to see how he moves in certain positions and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I don't. I didn't really need to watch too much to, to kind of know what he does. You know, he's he's just a guy that tries to get inside and take downs. He has nice trips, uh, judo trips. He has a pretty decent shot. So that's all I really needed to see. And um, yeah, I think I'll be more than prepared. He's been knocked out a few times in the 
do you feel like he has a, a, a suspect chin? Uh, yeah, I think he does, man. Um, but uh, with that, you know, with that being said, too, it's you just you can never say, "Oh, I'm gonna go in there and knock him out," this and that. It's, anything can happen. But uh, but yeah, I think I think he's he's susceptible to the knock the knockout. And uh, I mean, it'd be great to have another one. Knockouts are always fun, especially when they do those promos in Ryzen. They love to show all the knockouts. So, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. you said training. You've been training since two days after that fight with Jake Hewn. Um, you know, you fought in deep. Now, for this fight, you know, was there anything changing for you, or was it just you just continued the training that you had going the whole time? So yeah, I mean, yeah, I've been training. Um, and that's another thing too is like. So the we got right. We got confirmation for this fight, and um, after it was, you know, I accepted it and everything. Um, they came back and said he wanted the no elbows rule. So that kind of changed things up a little bit again, just because man, I throw it so often now in training, you know, and I wear the elbow pads and I throw it a lot. My training partners don't like it, but <laughs> something that I have to throw more. But man, the cool thing about that is it opened up so many other things and now i got kind of built me uh uh kind of set me up for i plan on coming out with a little surprise on rising uh on this next one coming up you know so he wants to take away my elbows now i get to show him something else <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> do you do you plan on anything for the walkout you know it seems like the walkout is something that's a big attraction nowadays in rising yeah. is there something for you because if you did something it'd be kind of different yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man, I mean, I thought about that, but I just wish I had a little better dance moves. Um, something, but I don't know, maybe one day, you know, maybe I'll choreograph with my team sometime, get a big, big, um, big of uh, advance notice we could do something. But I just, for me, just walking out to the fights, it's such a exciting and fun thing for me. You know, I just like to enjoy it. So we'll see how it goes. Maybe you could like bobsled down the the walkway, you know, oh, cause since it is flat and downhill. You could maybe bobsled. <laughs> you know, you don't have to dance, right? Dancing yeah, yeah, yeah. is just, you know, that's for dancers. You know, if you could really dance, but you got to find something unique, right? Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I hear you on that one. Now let's talk about uh your routine. You know, you talked about the training a little bit, but the routine that you have. You know, are you training at different locations because you said you were working on your elbows who is the coach that you work with most with your striking uh, well you know the thing with the elbows is i've learned um early on in my career from matt hume mm -hmm. and man he's a really good muay thai coach as well um i've learned elbows early on like when i first got into mma I, we have like this drilling sequence that we do a lot uh, but it just I never carried it into my fights, you know, I just felt like oh, I got my hands like I don't need elbows But um, with the whole injury thing. It's like oh man Let me let me drill this a little bit then from there it just got up to me like Working on elbows that worked for me, you know, cuz some some elbows aren't gonna work for some guys like Like uh, if you look at John Jones, he can throw crazy elbows from different uh, Ranges and stuff just because he has such long arms but I'm, I don't really have long arms, um, so I have to kind of throw them at different angles and different ways. But that's what I've been doing in training, you know. Uh, a lot of it's just me practicing stuff and seeing what works. And um, I stick with what works. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I just picked up, just kind of remembering what I learned early on in my career and just bringing it back. I always see you with the same guys in your corner. Who is your corner exactly? I never asked you this question. Yeah, so uh, this one I'll have, um, of course, the main guy at Spike 22, Malker Manabusen. Uh, he'll be in my corner. Um, one of my good training partners. He's just been with me for so long now, just training-wise and um, just around me. I like to have him in my corner is uh, Mike Tyron. He's actually one of the original MMA guys here on Guam. Um, and then also my my manager slash uh, good friend uh, Tony Bashaw. Uh, and <clears throat> the thing with with me and my corner and our relationship is, I'm not looking to have like experts in my corner. You know, I want people who they know what I like to do, they know what I'm good at, um, they just know the stuff that I need to hear. You know, I try not to 
as much as I, I mean, I, yeah, I want to go into the fight with that whole technical aspect, but I also don't overlook it either. You know, like you see so many people breaking down the technicalities of it that they forget to fight. And when it just comes down to it, man, it's, it's a freaking, it's a, it's a fist fight, man. And, uh, that's just really what it is. And I like having the people I want in my corner there just to remind me some stuff and pass me my water. Let me know the time. And, uh, that's it. That's just how I've always operated, you know? Um, but yeah, they're, they're great guys to have in my corner. The basics. You need the basics when, yeah. when there's so much chaos going around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of guys online, you know, those, uh, what is it, couch couch coaches, you know, the coaches yeah. on the couch, yeah. and uh, they want to yeah. be like, oh, why is that corner saying that and saying this? And it's like, come on, man. You know, yeah. you don't well, know what the agreement is, the fighter has with the coach. Yeah, yeah. and then I see some, some fighters who – you can hear their corner so much like they're just talking so much in the corner and i'm like man if the if the fighter is actually really listening to all that like is he even thinking about the fight itself you know so <laughs> i believe too in like over talking in the corner like hmm. like you gotta let the fighter fight like he's in there like for the most part he's gonna see what's going on but if you can give him a pointer or two or maybe something he's not seeing but like just that repetitive like they're like talking the whole time i'm like man come on that guy's not there's no way he's listening to everything. And if he is, then he's not focused on his opponent. You know, that's just how I view it. I mean, yeah. I'm no, I'm no expert either, but that's just one of my observations. Especially in Japan where you could hear everything. So if your coach yeah. is screaming and yelling, everybody could hear it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost embarrassing. It could be, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I like what Mike Perry said. He said that, uh, you know, his coaches would yell things at him, and he just said, you come here, and, you come in here and do it. You do it. Yeah. Then, so, you know, so actually, funny. with me, like, um, we had actually, our, me and my corner get a lot of um, compliments. Like, the first one they noticed it a lot was in um, when I fought in Top FC. Mm -hmm. um, I forget who it was. It's one of the guys who's running the event. They talked about how, me and my corner, we, we like literally conversate during the fight, you know, like he'll tell me something. I'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I see it. Or he'll tell me something. Like, oh, yeah, no, I, you know, maybe not this one. Or, or, you know, we're like literally talking or I'll ask him, hey, what's the time? This and that. Um, I tell my talk to my guys. I'm like, oh, I'm finally getting warmed up. Or So they, they were pretty impressed with that. And then even on this, <clears throat> when I lost to, um, I want to say it was Crow Cop, um, Jason Herzog. He was one of the side officials, not in the ring, but outside. And he was uh, talking to um, one of our uh, Melker, and he was saying, "Wow, man, you know, he's never heard people communicate like that." Um, which is crazy because you know I'm in the middle of a fight with Krokop, and I'm like, "Hey, what's the time?" Or I was telling them I was getting warmed up right before I got cut, you know. So a lot of people aren't used to that, but I guess being calm under all that chaos. Speaking of TFC, Top FC. You know, a guy that you beat in that promotion, yeah. Chung Daun, he's he got signed to the UFC and he's doing oh, really yeah. well, man. When you see I a guy like that, man, that you fought and beat before, you know, is it surprising to you or is it almost like no surprise? You knew that guy was talented. You just, you know, fought him when he was younger. Yeah, no, I mean, you could tell he had the talent. Um, and I, I'm not too surprised. Uh, I, I watched his last fight um, when he, he KO'd the guy, right? Yeah. Uh, and he's his striking looks really good, you know. So that's good. And then, I mean, at the end of the day, too, that's that says something else too about you know the level that I fight at as well. Yeah. So I, I man, I wish I, I uh, we're friends, you know, on social media. So I like to wish him well on his on his fights, you know, when he's gonna fight and stuff. So yeah, it's good to see him two and zero now. You go in here, you take care of Shrek, right? And you and Jake fought to a split decision, close fight. Uh, you think. Um, why not fight Jake next in a rematch for the title since Jerry's out of the picture? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I, I love that. Uh, but I know, I think they were pushing for him. Um, <clears throat> I've been seeing a lot. It was him and uh, what's his name? Um, the other guy that they just picked up. Uh, that was light heavyweight, right? For the title. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, man, I'd love a rematch with them. Like, if I won this and he wins his next one or 
if we keep um, going the way we're going, we're eventually going to meet up again. Whether he's going up or down, heavyweight to light heavyweight, um, he's. Uh, I'm sure we're meeting the line in. Right? Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> but, uh, well, it doesn't have to be light heavyweight. I think that if if light heavyweight doesn't exist, why not just open have an open weight? Yeah, no, that's, I think that that's the best case scenario for everybody in the division. Yeah, no, for sure. Even man, if they did a, uh, you know, another Grand Prix, open weight Grand Prix, I see a lot of people asking for it, man. <coughs> so <coughs> it'd be cool to meet up in there. You know, either way, I'd, I'd definitely love a rematch with uh, Jake. He's been doing good too, man. Yeah. I watched his last fight; looked pretty impressive. Yeah. Um. Now, Yuri Prochaska. He was the light heavyweight champion for Ryzen. He got signed to the UFC. You know, what do you think are his chances against the top guys in the promotion? Do you think he has the ability to be the champion to maybe even dethrone John Jones? Um, like, man, honestly, like his stand up is it's really freaking good, you know. But the only thing is that man, the UFC they got so many, especially in that division the wrestling heavy type uh man those guys can wrestle man they got some talented wrestlers like look at john jones man he's he could almost take down anybody well i was actually surprised today but uh for the most part man he could take people like he took dc down uh, so if he can if yuri can work on his wrestling to keep the fight standing most definitely but um i think he'll definitely have to work on the wrestling and grappling part because i've seen him um I forget what fight that was where they brought in the. Uh, he's a big guy, and he actually took him down. But and he had Yuri in trouble, but he just faded in the fight. So there's holes there. But man, if he fixes those for sure, he has a potential. You know, he could be a um, top ten guy or possibly champ sometime. Yeah, definitely a young guy, a young prospect in that division. Now February twenty second, Ryzen twenty one, Roki Martinez returns to the to the beautiful white ring surface i love that and uh yeah in hamamatsu japan thank you roki for the time and uh good luck on the fight and good luck on all the stuff that you're doing outside the cage man it's it's wonderful to see yeah man thank you thanks again for having me and uh yeah really appreciate the time